at one and two. We're not trying to panic. But rookie quarterback Blake Westbrook needs to play better. Head coach Tim Cannon did not want to single him out to the media this week. Not trying to sabotage the young quarterback's confidence this early into his career. But he hasn't played great. His accuracy has been a major issue with countless yards left on the field. I knew going into this year with him being a 21-year-old rookie, it would be a work in progress. I just wanted to see him grow throughout the year and be a better player by the end of the season. But it's reality check time for this team with a 1-2 start and a matchup today against the Baltimore Ravens. They enter at 3-0 and they might be the best team on our schedule. But we have so much to fix, not just at the quarterback position, but I wasn't expecting us to be one of the worst rushing teams in football, and that's where we are right now. The defense has made some improvements, but not enough to make up for the issues now on the offensive side. Injuries have been an issue, and that's giving players like Paul Redman a chance to start and show he can be a future fixture for this defense. He will replace Brian Brissy today after Justin Medlock had the chance last episode. But it's going to take a special effort from this defense to slow down Lamar Jackson and to give us a chance to win this game. I love the way the Ravens are built. They have a great offensive line, playmakers on defense. They're always pretty competitive in the trenches. And of course, they have Lamar. But we'll see if we can put last week behind us. We need to do it quickly. We've already had a couple lost seasons in this franchise, and I don't want this to become the third in a row. So let's get to this week's game. It is week four, and the Saints, thankfully, are much healthier than they were last week. We have Zayvon Collins, Julian Love, and Ryan Ramchek all back. We're not at full strength, but we're in better shape than we were last week, and we've got to put that game behind us. Welcome to week four, everybody, from Baltimore. We are underway. Ravens up first, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. Here comes Lamar Jackson. 3-0 start to the year for Baltimore, and Jackson has eight touchdown passes to go with two interceptions. And you'll see a lot of this inverted pistol. A.J. Dillon, the new running back here with the Ravens, and he gets the call on the first play, but gets stuffed by Eric Armstead. A.J. Dillon replaces that Gus Edwards role they've had for so long. And the pass from Lamar is hauled in. That's Rashad Bateman for a gain of 11. They have a fullback in the game as well. Lamar pulls it back. Heads outside, outruns Bolden. He's up the numbers. Fenderson can't stop him. It is a Lamar Jackson touchdown on the third play of the game. You've got to play the option much better than that if you want to have a chance. Not a good way to get this game started, as we'll see Blake Westbrook in the offense. Westbrook was benched last week, makes his fourth start, and lobs it in there to Chris Olave. 17 and a first down. Good first pass. Again, starting at running back, we have Kendra Miller, who's taken down after a four-yard gain. Westbrook fakes to Miller, throws it out to Olave, and he is intercepted. He threw it right at the defender. It's another errant throw from the rookie. Olave had no chance. It's the fourth interception on the year for Blake Westbrook. Here's Dylan stuffed by James Bolden. And the all-pro tackle, Ronnie Stanley is shaken up. That would be a very difficult player to replace. A catch across the middle. That's the former St. Brandon Cooks. Now with what is like 14th team or something. Sweeping right, good stop on the play. That's Julian Love, who also missed last week. And the Saint defense gets off the field. Up the middle, Kendra Miller, he gets five. After a great season last year, Saints come in one of the worst rushing teams in football. They do get Miller out on the edge, and that is a solid gain. That was their bread and butter last season. Third down, Miller cutting inside. He's got the first down up to the 39. We need that run game to take some pressure off Westbrook. 
Tosses out. This is Olave now. Getting a block from Blackwell. And he's down the sideline to the Baltimore 38. Easy completions like that are also a nice help. At the Raven 40. Swung out Kendra Miller with room. And brought down after a gain of six. Need to keep these third downs manageable. Have to get to the 28. And Westbrook is dropped by Justin Matabike. He faced a lot of pressure last week and goes down here. And that'll bring on Blake Groupie. It's a 57-yard try. And his kick is good. Now, the only points we scored last week were on a 57-yard field goal. So hopefully we have a little more in the tank for this week. Raven ball. Here's Dylan getting loose into the secondary. Out to the 40. Ravens are going to run it down your throat if you can't stop it. Here's Jackson. Good throw and catch. And it's Elijah Shepard, the running back, who makes that reception. First down, Ravens. Play action. Jackson. Perfect throw on the outside to Clay Addison. A really talented young receiver they've drafted. Up to the 25. Shepard now on the carry. He shakes Fenderson. And he's got the touchdown. Way too easy. They get a hat on a hat. And it's just Shepard against the safety. You got to do better than that. Fenderson, he'll probably get better. Make that play later in his career. But he's the only one who had a chance even. And it's 14-3. Here's Westbrook finding Miller on the outside. Trying to keep the running backs a part of the pass game. Offset backfield. The stretch to Miller and running room. He's got the first. Out of bounds into Raven territory. We haven't had running lanes like that since last year. Fake from Westbrook. And a catch for Gilliam. But he would have been better off dropping it. This is another bad throw from Westbrook. Gilliam has all kinds of running room, but he throws it behind him. Kills all his momentum. Losing three. So Westbrook steps up and completes. That's Olave getting the lost yardage back. But can they keep the drive moving? Four-man rush. Westbrook is off the mark for Chris Olave. So many errant throws in his direction. And it looks like the Saints are keeping the offense on the field. This is aggressive. Fourth and five. Screen. Pierman. First down. They were going to let the speedy receiver go and make the play. Not wanting Westbrook to make a mistake. Now he throws it out. Good catch for Miller. Inside the 10. Three catches for Kendra Miller. They've all been productive plays. Now inside the 10, it's the first carry for Jadarius Roby, who gets overpowered by Roquan Smith. Back to the air for Westbrook, and a completion to Kevin Blackwell. Brings up a third down. Two tight ends on the field. Westbrook with time. Floats it. Caught for the touchdown. Chris Olave. Perfect play. The protection is excellent, and the ball away from the defender as Chris Olave can make that catch. We got ourselves a 14-10 game. This is more like it. And down goes A.J. Dillon. That's James Bolden. Bolden, a key player in this game, one of our better run defenders. He and Foskey combine this time to bring up third down. Pressure coming. Jackson doesn't care. It's Cooks. And a Raven first down. Jackson 5 of 5 through the air. On first down. Caught by Bateman. And off to the races. He will score. Another big play for the Baltimore Ravens. He wins off the line in press coverage against Jonathan Jones. And the safety Fenderson takes an awful angle. Doesn't even make contact with him. It's a 21-10 game as the growing pains with this team aren't going anywhere quite yet. To Darius Roby. Into the secondary. Now he gets loose. We're definitely run blocking better today if you're looking for some positives. 
Westbrook fakes and Blackwell makes the catch. Another first down. Westbrook 11 for 13, that's improvement. From the Baltimore, 47, caught by Garrett Wilson for the first. Westbrook does seem a bit more comfortable. Granted, he was picked off on his first pass of the day. Now they'll bring Olave across and can't fool the Ravens. That's Sample who makes the play. We have four and change to play in the first half as Westbrook overthrows Kevin Blackwell. Sets up third down. Three receivers to the right. Good protection and the pass just in front of Jacoby Pierman. And he was wide open. These are throws you cannot afford to miss, especially against teams as good as Baltimore. Another 57-yard field goal. Groupie gets it through. His third 57-yarder in the last two weeks. But we should have extended that drive. Four minutes to play now in the first half. Here's Dylan again. And the secondary rumbling through this defense. Somebody's got to get off a block. We don't match up well against this run game, that's for sure. Here's Jackson right on target to his favorite receiver. That's Mark Andrews, a first down to the St. 33. Two minutes on the clock. Jackson throws it away. His first incompletion of the first half. Bringing the extra man. Jackson gets out of the pocket. And the first down with ease. Diving ahead to the 13 of the Saints. Who will burn a timeout. Hoping for time to respond to whatever the Ravens do. And it'll be a touchdown. Jackson to Andrews. This is one scary offense. 28-13 Ravens. No timeouts left for the Saints, just trying to keep up the best they can. A screen, and Antoine Priestley can't get past the line of scrimmage. Four-man rush, here's Westbrook, he's intercepted! That's Matthew Watkins for a touchdown! Ravens way up now! And it's the most points we've allowed in any game this season. And it's not even halftime yet. Intended for Jacoby Pierman. And it's another multi-interception game for Blake Westbrook. Back-to-back -back blowouts is not good for team morale, especially this early in the year. Westbrook, he's going to keep on trying, and he's sacked again by Matabike. Time running out on the Saints as Westbrook has to escape. Heaves it downfield. It's caught. Jacoby Pierman out of bounds. At least setting up a Hail Mary try. Westbrook has a strong arm. It'll surely get there. He launches, and it's knocked away in the end zone. Ravens dominant in this game as they were kind of expected to. But I was hoping we'd keep this much closer. Turnovers and poor defense again are the issue. The two quarterbacks we've traded away in the past year are having really good starts to their seasons. Sam Darnold has the Commanders at 2-1 going on 3-1 if they can finish against Tennessee. And Trey Lance has done great with the Las Vegas Raiders. We're trying to build for the future, but I think everybody's tired of the losses these last couple years and now starting the season like this. I know that it's difficult to uh, stay invested. Saints football start of the second half and Westbrook to the air and he throws incomplete. Pressure got there and he could not find Garrett Wilson. See if the defense can stop giving up all the big plays here in the second half. They try to blitz Jackson, and he finds Brandon Cooks. That goes for eight yards. Jackson to the middle. That's incomplete. Good coverage. Now third and short. Single back is Dylan, and he grinds out those two yards and then some. Really tough team to face on third and short. 
Jackson feels pressure, looks down the field, and it's through the hands of Clay Addison. Saints have another chance. They show pressure. They do bring it. That is a catch. Mark Andrews extends the drive. Well, at least we're not the only team to look bad this year against Baltimore. Third down, Jackson looking long. It is caught. Clay Addison down to the 12. All this talent and perhaps a star in the making here with Addison. Now Cooks turns up and nearly scores against his old team. Ravens one yard away, not even that. It is a touchdown for A.J. Dillon. Baltimore now breaks 40. Down 29. Saints trying to put together a drive, and it is Zamir White getting the carry in a gain of six. Reggie Gilliam, the motion man. They run left. All kinds of room. White gets a block. He's in the secondary, and he will go the distance. Touchdown, New Orleans. That is a 57-yard touchdown. And for the league's worst rushing attack coming in, a 57-yard touchdown's a pretty big deal. Great job on this play by Olave at receiver and also with Jimmy Ward at center having a key block. 42 to 20. Lamar Jackson, another catch made by Addison. Baltimore trying to go to 50 now. Two minutes to go in the third. Caught. Good hands from Rashad Bateman. We have contested most of these plays. We're just not forcing incompletions. There we go. Threw it up for Bateman. Jonathan Jones defended. Play action. Jackson deep again. Bateman can't hold on. It's third down. With the Ravens up 22. Jackson outside with it and incomplete. Good job by the secondary making a stand there. Zamir White has earned some additional snaps as Westbrook rolls and can't escape Henry. Loss of 12 to start this drive. He's got to go a long way and will buy some time. Westbrook directing traffic, throws incomplete, no flags. Wanted Garrett Wilson. We pick it up with the Saints now, 9.30 left to go in the game, and Westbrook is intercepted again. And it's Watkins, he scored earlier. He wants a second one, but will come up five yards short. And it's a three interception game for Blake Westbrook. The Ravens haven't scored in a while, so they change that here. Touchdown, Rashad Bateman. Looking at a second straight blowout, but this one against one of the better teams in the league at least. But where do we go from here? I'm not convincing anyone we're a playoff team right now. I do think we can get better over the course of the season. Nice job here by Jacoby Pierman. And there's a lot of talent in this passing game. We should be able to figure some things out and start to put up good numbers again. But it's been a very disjointed start. We've done some things really poorly. Our weaknesses are pretty weak. Here's a flip to Garrett Wilson trying to get to the edge. And he follows Olave close to a first down. This week, even with three interceptions, feels like an improvement for Blake Westbrook. Just with the accuracy and helping us put together some more scoring drives. We're inside the 20 and Zamir White makes the catch. Heads outside and gets nine more. Been a good day for him, showing he can help out this offense. Roby in now. Really could have used that block. He is stopped. Fourth down. They got Zamir White back in the game. He takes it, cuts downhill, and does not get it. And the Saints are denied here in the red zone. Five to go in the game. Raven ball. Here's A.J. Dillon. Who wants to tackle him here in the fourth quarter? Down 29. 
A run to Mitchell now. He's looked good too. Takes it up close to the 40. The Ravens can run their way to 4-0, and the Saints will be headed to 1-3. It's a bad first quarter to the season, but I do think there is some hope with this team. I'm optimistic. I'm not thinking playoffs right now. We've got to win a lot more games to think about that. In these four games, we've had one matchup where we dealt with a bunch of injuries and just had a lot of bad plays that really changed the game against Arizona. And then we run into the buzzsaw here that is the Baltimore Ravens. I don't think it's quite as bad as it looks. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying we're a playoff team. But I do think we're going to find a way to win more games than we have the last two years. And I think we're going to get a lot better between now and the end of the year. We had all right starts to the seasons in year two and year three and then completely fell apart after the trade deadline. I'm hoping we can find a way this year to finish better than we start in comparison to those two years. Today, I liked incorporating the screens and the running backs into the pass game more to give us more positive plays and to help that completion percentage out a bit. I still think that there's just too many issues with bullet passes in this game and maybe on some of those overthrows if we just throw it with touch instead Westbrook might have a chance to complete a few more of those so I'll try to not throw bullet passes as I have for the last like 15 years it's tough muscle memory to unlearn. In our games this year, the secondary has really battled. I just think the Ravens were an awful matchup and they expose our greatest weaknesses more than the other teams that we've faced. So let's see if we can get back on track next week. Now, Paul Redman, he got hurt in this week's game. He's added to the injury report with a foot fracture. So Justin Medlock, by default, is going to end up playing more. And we're also going to be making a roster move. I'll show you here momentarily. Jadarius Roby, 3.2 yards a carry. Kendra Miller at 4.0. Those averages are improving. But today, Zamir White had the big play. And he should be in line for some more carries. As we're going to ride the hot hand here until we get it right. Chris Olave, 298. Garrett Wilson, 278. I'd like us to do better getting the ball to Kevin Blackwell. He was such a dominant player last season, but hasn't broken two catches in a game to start this season. The secondary is improved this year, but I think our pass rush has taken a big step back. One player who's been silent four games in is James Houston. No sacks, not really getting any pressures. He's been very quiet out there, and I'm concerned about that. We'll see if he can create some havoc against the Panthers next week. We face a winless team. Should be a more winnable matchup for us. And if it isn't, maybe I should fire myself. We're going to sign DJ Jones to add more D-line depth. But Justin Medlock will play. I'll continue hoping that he plays well. Yet to really see it happen consistently. We will add Manny Golson then to the practice squad. Carolina's off to a really bad start this year. They're 0-4, just like the Buccaneers. Now, as we approach the trade deadline, I'll be considering some of our options with a few of these players, especially guys like Brian Brissy that aren't interested in coming back. But while I have some players who do want to come back, why don't we give an offer to Ryan Ramchek? We have a lot of work to do. I don't want to add replacing him to the list. He's 32 years old, so I don't go with a three-year offer. We offer him a strong two-year deal. He takes it. Next up is probably Chris Olave. But I think Brian Brissy and Isaiah Foskey are two players we should trade. And there's a lot of interest in Foskey. I don't take these computer-generated offers very seriously, but it tells me that a lot of teams like him. So I think we're going to see what's out there what we can possibly get back to give us a small boost or make up for something we're struggling with. We'll see if I can find some trades that I'm happy with. I could get picks, but I'm also intrigued in trying to get a player and seeing if we can get some success out of this year. The main thing for me is seeing the, the young players we've drafted develop, and then I want to break the five wins that 
we only had the last two seasons. I'd like to get to seven or eight wins. I know that's going to take some work. I want to see the young players play well, earn upgrades, and let's get stronger throughout the year. Now, we do upgrade Blake Westbrook, and it's not the upgrade I wanted. Three deep accuracy, one awareness. I need short accuracy. And with where his morale is, it's even lower than it should be. And this is the big problem losing as badly as we have these last two weeks. The morale effect is pretty serious. Everybody's going to start playing a bit worse. And for a lot of these players, that makes them almost ineffective. If we do continue to lose that badly and morale is that much of an issue, I would consider a change to David Mayweather if I think he can stabilize things because I have to get more than just the quarterback developed this year. Surely with Westbrook, I've made some bad reads, some bad decisions. The accuracy is really more killing drives when he's under 50% completion, missing third down conversions. If it isn't improving and I try out Mayweather and he fixes that problem, then I would be okay making that switch and hopefully not ruining morale even further for this team. It's pretty critical we bounce back against Carolina. I've called what feels like far too many games the proverbial must-win game. I'll try to refrain against the Panthers. But boy, it sure would be nice to win this one. And to start taking some positive steps here in Season 4. Thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all are the most patient viewers here on YouTube, and hopefully it is rewarded eventually. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm excited to find out. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.